Hey everyone, Eric here, uh, this time with a review of Food Fight for the Atari 7800, and this is actually my first Atari 7800 review. I just recently picked one up because I wanted to start playing uh, some Atari 7800 games and also use it to capture video when I review Atari 2600 games because it's just a less bulky system. Um, if you want to see what I'm talking about and how I'm doing that, I'll put a link down to my Atari 7800 system pickup video down in the description. But anyways, right after I picked that up, I uh, went out game hunting, and I actually found two Atari 7800 games. I found Food Fight, and I found uh, Karataka, or however that's pronounced. And I got these for two bucks each, which was, I think, a great deal. Um, and what you'll notice about Atari 7800 games is the cartridges are the exact same size and shape as an Atari 2600 cartridge, but they all have this silverish style label. Uh, some of them are monochrome, some of them are color, but they all look like this. So they stick out. So if you are out game hunting and you're collecting for the Atari 7800, definitely uh, sift through the Atari 2600 games at your local game store. You'll probably find a couple of Atari 7800 games in there and they'll stick right out. And I am going to do a video about Karataka or however you pronounce that as soon as I figure out how in the hell to play this because I have been trying to play this for two hours now and I can't figure it out and it's pissing me off but I will figure it out and I will review it. Anyways, back to Food Fight. So Food Fight is uh, a port of a 1983 arcade game that was published by Atari and then it was released in 1987 on the Atari 20, uh, 7800. Uh, I believe the only other home system it was ported to was the Atari uh, computer. So. You will not find this on the NES or any other home system. The only way to play an, a port of this arcade game is on an Atari system. And if you own an Atari 7800, you need to have Food Fight. This is an amazing game. I'd never played the arcade game. I've never seen it before. I never heard of it. Um, but I just bought this one because it was two bucks. And I did a quick look on the internet and saw it was based on an arcade game. So I figured, hey, why not? And definitely worth the two dollars. Uh, might possibly be a reason to own the Atari 7800. Let's take a look at it. So there's a few different difficulties. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert. I'm going to play on expert because anything less than intermediate is for commies and people who think Crystal Skull was a good Indiana Jones film. But anyways, the point of the game is to control the main character here whose name is Charlie Chuck. And the point is to eat that ice cream before the chefs get you and before it melts. And as you can see, if you stand over the different piles of food, you can pick up food and fire it at the chefs to kind of knock them off screen for a minute. And that's a good way to earn points. Um, when you get into the later levels, the chefs can also pick up the food and throw it at you too. Um, and the chefs actually have names, the four chefs. They're uh, Angelo, Jacques, Oscar, and Zorba. And you can see the food is kind of different from level to level, and the placement is different. Um, you can also take out the bad guys by tricking them into falling into a hole, which is another uh, good way to earn points. Almost had the ice cream melt there on me. There is a little uh, warning tone that plays when the ice cream is getting real close to melting. So there is a good risk versus reward system here as far as uh, staying on the board as long as you can, firing food off at the chefs uh, before eating the ice cream, but you know, not waiting too long that the ice cream melts. And what's kind of neat too is the different types of food behave, diff behave differently. For example, this, I don't know if it's salad or spinach or what it is, but it doesn't fly all the way across the screen whereas the other kind of food does. Also what's kind of cool is if you're holding a piece of food when you eat the um, ice cream you carry that on with you to the next level. And these are my favorite levels, the watermelon, because the watermelon is unlimited. So you can kind of go all death blossom like you see how I'm going here and uh, take out the chefs uh, over and over again to earn more points. But you can see that can be dangerous too, and you can end up losing a life, like I just did. The levels with watermelon are definitely good opportunities to score lots of points.
Now this is another really cool feature of the game. If you have a particularly good level where you dodge the chefs a lot, and dodge a lot of food, and, and take them out quite a bit, it'll give you an instant replay, which is pretty neat. Overall, this is just a great uh, single-screen arcade game. Um, for a long time, Popeye on the NES was like my go-to single-screen arcade game when I had a few minutes to kill, but uh, lately I've been playing Food Fight. I, I love this game. It's a great game. As you get into some of the higher levels, the chefs start moving quicker, and as you can see, they're throwing the food a lot more often, too, so the difficulty definitely ramps up. A lot more holes appear on the board, too, and you have to remember, you know, watch where you're walking, because you can fall on those, too, and lose a life. This is not one of my better rounds. I can usually make it to about level 15 or so on advance. I've been getting pretty good. But, like I said, if you've got an Atari 7800 and you don't have Food Fight, you definitely need to pick this game up. It is a great game. And it's not expensive either. Thanks for checking out my first Atari 7800 review. If you've got a few minutes, why don't you check out one of these other video game reviews I've done. And also don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and check out my links to social media down in the description below.